In this video, we're going to look at Chapter 10, Section B.2 on True Variance. Let's first consider the points of the compass. North, East, South, and West. Also, let's consider a circle. We know that there are 360 degrees in a circle. We can combine this with the points of the compass and using a set convention, we can define a bearing for any direction from a specific point, let's call it O, or the origin. If we were to start at O and we, and we went directly up towards the end, we'd be going on a bearing of zero degrees. That's because by convention, north is always zero degrees. By convention, we go clockwise from north. Therefore, if I was to go east, directly east, I would be heading on a bearing of 90 degrees. So remember, we always go clockwise by convention. We can find the bearings of the other two points of the compass. South is 180 degrees, west is 270 degrees. And if I was to make a complete circle and heading back north again, I would also be at 360 degrees. So in this case, a bearing of 0 degrees and 360 degrees is the same thing. The true bearing of point B from point A, and note the terminology here from, this is really important, is the clockwise angle between the line AB and the north line, which we know by convention always points straight up. Let's take a look at a diagram to illustrate this point. Again, we have the four points of the compass, and we have point A right in the center. Point B is all the way down here. We know that true north is straight up, and true north has a bearing of zero degrees. From the true north line, I can draw an angle. Again, we'll use theta as the unknown, from the north line to the line AB. This angle is the true bearing. And if I know its measurement, I can accurately draw the line AB. We know that in this particular case, theta is going to be between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. That's because it's in the second quadrant down here. It's greater than 90 degrees, which is directly east, but less than 180 degrees, which is directly south. Let's take a look at a few examples. For instance, let's find the bearing of Q from P if we know the bearing of P from Q is 125 degrees. In all of these problems, it's always very useful and very important to draw a diagram. First, let's draw the four points of the compass. Again, north is always straight up. We know that the bearing of point P from Q, which means that we're going to start at Q, Q's in the center. The bearing of P from Q, and we can draw P down here, 
is 125 degrees. That means this angle right here, this angle theta, equals 125 degrees. Now the question asks, what's the bearing of Q from P? Well, if I draw another set of coordinates down here at P, and then starting at the north line, draw an angle that goes all the way around to the line QP, this angle is my true bearing. We can use a little bit of geometry here to help us find the measure of that angle. One of the most important tools that we have from geometry is the parallel line theorem, which tells us that if I have any two parallel lines, like the x-axis of these two coordinate systems, and I have a bisecting line, like the line PQ, then the opposite angles must be equal. So if I can find this angle up here, right underneath Q, then I know the other angle opposite the line QP down towards P. Well, we know that from north to east is 90 degrees, and we also know that the entire angle from north down to the QP line, or the line PQ, is 125. So whatever is left over, whatever is underneath the east line, must be the measure of this angle. So that's 125 degrees minus 90 degrees equals 35 degrees. Therefore, I know by the parallel line theorem that this is 35 degrees down here as well. And that's only this angle right here. But from our first slide, we know that from the north line all the way around to the west compass point is 270 degrees. So to find the missing angle here, or the bearing that we're looking for, I simply add 270 degrees and 35 degrees, and I get 305 degrees. And a way to at least check to see if we're in the ballpark is to make sure that that makes sense for the coordinate that we're in. If I start at north and go around 305 degrees, I should move past the west line, which is 270, but not reach the north line again, which is back to 360. I have to be somewhere in between. And based on our diagram, we see that that's true. So we're at least in the right ballpark. Let's take a look at a slightly more complicated problem. Here we have a plane that departs from point A and flies on a 143 degree course for 368 kilometers. So before we move on, let's draw a detailed diagram that illustrates that point. We'll start with the four compass points at point A. We know that we're headed on a course 143 degrees. So again, I'm going to be past the east coordinate, but not quite to the south coordinate, almost halfway in between. So I'll draw another line here that goes down to a place we'll call it point B. And again, we can draw a new set of coordinates here. Let's label that point B. And we know that, again, this angle up here is 143 degrees. We don't need to label that theta, so we'll just get rid of that. Now let's read the rest of the problem. The plane then changes direction to a 233 degree course and flies 472 kilometers. Remember that the first distance was 368 kilometers. Well, from point B, 230 degrees, 
is going to put us between the, the south coordinate and the west coordinate. We're going to head back this way. And again, I can draw a new set of coordinates down here, and we'll call this point C. And we know that this angle is 233 degrees, and that the plane is flying for 472 kilometers. Before we move on, let's see if we can fill in any other information using the parallel line theorem. Again, I know that this angle right here is 143 degrees minus 90. So that will be 53 degrees. Therefore, I know that this is 53 degrees. I also know this angle right here because this angle plus the 53 degrees have to add up to 90. They're complementary angles. So I know that this will be 37 degrees. Okay, now let's take a look at what the question is asking us to find. It wants us to find the distance of C to A. So let's draw another line from C back up to A. And let's take a look at this triangle and see if we can find out anything else that helps us. We forgot one angle at point B. Notice that we know all the other angles except this little piece right here. Well, if we subtract all of the other angles, we find out that this is also 37 degrees. And by inspection here, we notice that 37 plus 53 gets us 90, which means that the angle here, the angle ABC, is really equal to 90 degrees. That's extremely helpful because now I have a right triangle, and to find the distance between points C and A, I simply need to use the Pythagorean theorem. So the distance between points A and C is 368 kilometers squared plus 472 kilometers squared. We take the square root of all that and we have approximately 598.5 kilometers. The next question asks us to find the bearing of C from A. So again, we're going to start at A and draw an angle that goes all the way around until it hits the line AC. Notice we know about the first half of that angle. It's about 143 degrees, or it's exactly 143 degrees until we hit the point or the line AB. If we can find the remaining part of that angle, then we can simply add it to the 143 degrees and we know our bearing. Well, because this is a right triangle and because I know all the sides, I can use inverse trig functions to find that angle. Notice that we were given these two sides exactly, so let's use those because that will get us the most exact answer for theta. And notice that I have uh, the two shorter sides of the triangle, so I should use the inverse of tangent. Let's write, let's write out the equation here. We have the inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent. In this case, opposite is 472, because the angle that we're interested in is up here, right? Opposite is across from that angle, divided by the adjacent side, which is 368. And that's going to get us theta. We plug that into our calculator, and we find that theta is approximately 
52.06 degrees. And remember, we're not quite done. We need to add that to the 143 degrees that we already have to get the, the true bearing. of C from A, and so we add 52.06 to 143 degrees, and we get about 195 degrees. 